my pleasure to introduce our speaker of the day. Uh, he's going to be joining us on Zoom today. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nolan Reinish oh, yeah. has served as a teacher for 20 years. He has always felt a calling to inspire and motivate the lives of children. During his career, Nolan received certification in mindfulness and education, helping to create and implement a mindfulness meditation program for the students in his school and a meditation for self-care program for teachers in the district. Nolan believes that reforming education and emphasizing meditation and social emotional skills, such as compassion, empathy, self-love, and kindness in schools will change the inner world of children, which will ultimately change the outer world that we all live in as a result. Eight years ago, Nolan experienced what he calls a spiritual awakening. Since then, he's been an avid student of the metaphysical through quantum physics, spiritual books, and various modalities of meditation. He's currently a student of Self-Realization Fellowship of Paramahanyasa Yogananda, practicing the scientific meditation practices of Kriya Yoga. Nolan's deepest calling is to impact and improve the future of our planet by raising the collective consciousness of humanity through heart-based consciousness. He's currently a HeartMath certified instructor. His focus is on building personal resilience, reducing stress, and enhancing the overall well-being of the people he works with. He specializes in scientifically backed heart math techniques and biofeedback technology, which teaches others how to create and sustain inner states of heart brain coherence, allowing them to regulate their own nervous system, conquer stress and anxiety, and live with more ease and emotional resilience. Please join us in welcoming Nolan as he shares his knowledge and inspirational insights today. Hello, everybody. Hello. Oh, I'm looking, I'm looking at my little window at the chapel, people. So yeah, it's good to see you guys. <laughs> hey, I miss you guys. I really do. I really do. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person. I originally had planned to, but um, my grandmother passed away oh, about a week ago. So we're having her memorial um, today and after church. So decided to do it by Zoom and that's okay. You know, you know, this is a good alternative that I could be here with you guys and share uh, my message. So um, just like my man, Bill Whitley, I give my talks, my speeches, uh, titles. <laughs> so my title today is Practical Spirituality, Heart Coherence. All right, you may have heard about that in uh, my bio, well, a little bit about heart coherence, but Practical Spirituality, I titled it that because this is something that has been very important to me lately. Um, I love practical spirituality. I believe spirituality should be very practical, where every single day, life is your ashram. Life is your church. Every single day where the words, your actions, your decisions are all aimed towards the evolution of your soul, the evolution of you as a person, right? And that's why I really think what life should be. So I wanted to give you some uh, practical spiritual tool called heart coherence. I want to explain that to you today. Okay. So imagine a moment in your life when stress felt like an overwhelming tide threatening to pull you under. Perhaps it was at work during a challenging time in your relationships or facing unexpected hurdles. Now, picture having a simple, practical, yet very effective tool that not only helps you navigate those stormy waters, but also unlocks a doorway to a deeper, more meaningful spiritual connection. Today, I want to show you the path to personal freedom. Freedom from the self, the self with a small s. <laughs> The self that always seems to be bothered, the self that is easily frustrated, the self that is irritable, easily annoyed by people, the weather, things people say, things people do, traffic, the self, the you that is in there, the you that is listening to this. Why is this me just often not okay? Why am I always exhausted? Why are my emotions so easily triggered and changed? Why can't I just be okay in here? Why don't I feel happy all the time? Why don't I feel happy most of the time? Why am I always struggling? Does anybody feel that way sometimes? A lot of the times? 
despite how spiritual we are, how many times we go to church, how many spiritual books we read, how many crystals we wear, how intuitive we are, how many people we help, we all are subject to the same human condition, suffering. Today, this is most often described through another word that plagues us all, stress, right? So I wanted to give you some statistics. So you know, I like to know the reality of situations, not just subjectively, but really know how many people are suffering from stress and what's the impact of it? Well, let's look at statistics. There was a poll done by the American Psychiatric Association, and this was in January of 2022. So a year from now, or a year ago, I should say, a year ago in the past. So a year ago, 64% of Americans felt like they were being attacked by the government, that their very rights are being threatened and violated by the government that's supposed to protect us, right? 75% of Black Americans, 70% of Latinos, 69% of Asian Americans, and 56% of whites say that the racial climate of the United States is a major source of stress, okay? And this being an election year, wait till you see that all over the news. 83% <laughs> of Americans say that inflation and having enough money to pay for things in the present me <laughs> or saving for the future is a major source of stress in their life. 75% of Americans agreed that violence and crime are a major source of stress in their lives. Gun violence and mass shootings on the rise everywhere we look, every time we turn on the news, violence, 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 shootings, shootings. Okay. More, th this one really surprised me. More than a quarter of Americans said that most days they are so stressed that they can't function, okay? They can't function. Of those people under the age of 35, this was also very surprisingly, under the age of 35, almost half of them claim this to be true, that they just can't function day to day because of so much stress. Younger adults feel completely overwhelmed by stress. I don't know if you've ever felt that where you just, you start your day and you're like, I just don't know how I can get through this. Uh, 20 years as a teacher and working with lots of teachers, I happen to know that there are so many teachers that pull into the parking lot of school and they cry before they go in and they pray to, to, to get through the day. And they go in and they put their happy face in and they put their compassionate heart on and they smile all day like everything is fine and dandy. And then they go back into the parking lot and they cry again because it's so much stress. There's so much press pressure uh, and life is hard. Some of our jobs are hard. Around 76% of Americans said that they have experienced health impacts due to stress just in the past month headaches, fatigue, anxiety, and depression being common symptoms. And these are just the societal issues people are facing in the current world. This doesn't include the equally serious stresses faced in our personal lives, right? Work-related stress, the lack of time for our family, the lack of time that we might have for self-care, Strained relationships with the people we love, our friends, our romantic partners, okay? Divorce, family conflicts. People are facing isolation and loneliness. Sometimes people are facing the stress of a new job, a new career, moving to a new location, dealing with the grief, grief from the loss of a loved one. The negative, the negativity of social media, right? Where we have this platform to always compare ourselves to others, where we have this platform where people can be the absolute ugliest, right? Um, people are stressed from a lack of sufficient sleep, a lack of exercise, proper nutrition, and then ultimately as well, feeling a lack of purpose a lack 
or a feeling that you don't have meaning in life. All of these things make people miserable. And here are the results. One in five Americans suffer from a mental illness. More than 40,000 Americans die annually from suicide. Suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States. An adolescent dies from suicide every 100 minutes. An adolescent, these are kids, teenagers, every 100 minutes, somebody takes their life. Anxiety disorders are the highest reported mental health issue in the US with over 42 million Americans suffering from this illness. Almost half of Americans will experience an episode of mental illness in their lives. There are 4.5 million children in the US diagnosed and living with anxiety. 322 million people worldwide live with depression. Have I painted a bleak enough picture for you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Are you thoroughly depressed <laughs> by the world and the suffering that people go through? I know I am sometimes, okay? Well, to make this personal, 2023, I have experienced many of those things that I just talked about. It was by far the hardest, most challenging year of my life. Due to burnout, physical, mental, and emotional fatigue, I left my career in education a job that I once loved, and it gave me much fulfillment and purpose. I lost a personal relationship uh, that I cared about that left me in much, much heartache. I moved to a new city. Hello from Richmond. <laughs> uh, and within one month of being here, I was totally broke. <laughs> I find out that I wasn't getting any of my teacher money from uh, in the summer months like I expected. Uh, so I had no money and I had no job. <laughs> um, I had moved into a house with a guy who owned the house. He was my roommate. Um, he got engaged. Um, and this is one month after I lived there. And when he got engaged, he told me I had to go. <laughs> so I found myself without a place to live as well. <laughs> so not too great, right? With my world crumbling apart, I knew that I had nothing to do but truly surrender to the universe, to dive deep into my spirituality, to heal my heart, heal my past traumas, and create the best evolved version of myself. And I've done that. I've worked so hard this year, or I should say I'm still doing that, right? And in that work, in that process, in that journey, I've found a new way to serve humanity to serve and to help people, to help humanity heal, to help humanity evolve and do the same for myself. How did I do that? You ask, <laughs> maybe you're asking. Well, I'm super, super stoked to share it with you guys. The answer is super simple and it's beautiful in its simplicity. The answer is the heart the heart, okay? Many of us know about the heart that we're taught about in school books. We know about the heart as a physical organ. We know the heart beats in our chest. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. We know the heart beats blood, uh, pumps blood through our system, carrying blood cells, carrying oxygen. We know how important it is, but the heart is much more than a physical organ. The heart is an energetic organ. The heart is part of your energy body, okay? Now, many of you know this, but we have an energy body, right? The energetic body. This is often what's worked on when people do Reiki. The energy body is often what people refer to as spirit, or maybe you might see it or refer to it as an aura. But the energy body is what's called the causal body cause and effect, cause and effect. So if the energetic body is the causal body, that means whatever happens in our energetic body, it is then manifested in our physical body. It becomes part of our physical reality. So the energetic realm manifests into the physical realm. Our energetic body affects our physical body. Does that make sense? 
All right. So I want to share with you, if I can, here in a second. I'm trying to figure out how I can do that. Oh, please make this easy. <laughs> Google Chrome. There we go. All right, guys. Ooh, go away. Sorry, guys. You guys don't want to see my Zoom screen. I know. <laughs> I want to share with you some information about the energetic body. All right. Did you know that the heart has the ability to generate the largest electromagnetic field in the body generated by the heart's electricity and that these fields change according to emotions? The human heart's magnetic field that we can see here, right, can be measured up to several feet away from the body, right? Isn't that amazing? Up to several feet from, from out the body. So you're literally a walking giant field of energy, right? Did you know that when we are expressing positive, renewing emotions like appreciation, kindness, gratitude, and compassion, the heart is able to generate a beautifully organized, highly coherent field that not only affects our physiology, but also affects others around us. Others can pick up the quality of your emotions through the electromagnetic energy radiating from your heart. Think about how you know that to be true, right? You know how you can just feel when sometimes when somebody walks into a room and you can feel their energy, and whether it's sometimes it's bad energy and we're like, oh, that person just isn't nice to be around, right? Like there's this negative energy to them. But we also know those people that just walk into a room and we always say like that person lit up a room, right? They light up a room. Well, they literally do because they come and they bring that energy that you can feel, right? That energy feels good. They have love and they have joy in their energy and they walk into a room and they just give it to everybody, right? They're like, they're like Oprah with, <laughs> with their energy. They're like, you get light and love. You get light and love. You get light and love. <laughs> so we can just feel that energy, right? When people walk into a room, we our emotional state is reflected in our electromagnetic field created by our heart. And to me, that's so cool. The brain also produces an electromagnetic field which can be measured about an inch outside of the head. So the field is generated by your brain and your heart mainly, okay? But the heart's magnetic field is 100 times stronger than that produced by the brain. Well, this one says 100,000 times. Wow, so I've heard different numbers. Anyways, it's super strong, right? So the heart's electromagnetic field is by far the strongest magnetic field, stronger than your brain, stronger than your mind, right? The signals that our hearts send to our brains affect our emotional state, okay? So our emotional state, and it makes sense. Emotions are energy. If I told you to bring me a bucket full of happiness, you couldn't do it. It's not physical can't touch it. You can't grab it, right? It's energy, right? And so that signal between your heart and your brain is creating a field. It's creating an emotional state that you experience and other people around you experience. The heart and the brain energetically communicate with each other, but the heart sends more information to the brain than the brain sends to the heart. Okay, so think about this whole energetic system is about your nervous system, the nervous system, which is your stress response. When we're upset, when we're angry, when we're frustrated, when we're in stress at all, there's communication from your heart to your brain to your nervous system, right? And that these signals affect your perception, the way I perceive things. Think about it. When I'm in a stress state, Let's say something happened, somebody is act, said something really nasty or mean to me. Now I'm angry, now I'm irritated, now I'm stressed out. Now I have a lens 
now I'm looking through the lens of that perception. Now I see the world through my anger. I see the world through my hurt. I see the world through my upset. My perception is now skewed. So I'm now going to project because everything I see in the world is now seen through that lens of how I'm currently feeling, right? So when we're stressed, we're going to see negative in the world. We're going to experience negative in the world. It's a perpetual cycle, right? So we got to take these lenses off, right? We want our lenses to be clear. We want to perceive the world through love, kindness, compassion, happiness, joys, ease, contentment right? These signals uh, uh, affect your emotional state. Like we said, your emotional experience. But these signals also affect your cognitive functioning, okay? So we know our the front of your brain, your prefrontal cortex, your neocortex, this is the part of your brain that allows you to think critically. It allows you to problem solve, it allows you to make decisions, okay? So when you're in a stress state, when you experience those big stressful feelings, you are using the part of your brain called the amygdala. That's their fight or flight mechanism. That's your stress response. That's, that's the part of your brain that keeps you alive, right? This is for survival. And stress is a survival response. Now the signals aren't able to get to the front of our brain. Therefore we experience brain fog. We can't think clearly. We don't know what to do. We don't know what to say, right? And then, of course, we make bad decisions. We react in anger. We say things we don't mean, right? We're not effective at our jobs. So this signal between your heart to your brain, to your nervous system affects you on a single way, right? In a positive state of emotion, our heart's energy synchronizes with our brain, right? and our nervous system. When these symptoms are in harmony, we call this state coherence. There is a harmony between your heart and your brain and your nervous system. These signals are moving at the same wavelength. They're synchronized. We call this coherence, okay? Adversely, when we are in a negative state of emotion, our heart's energy is out of sync with the brain and the nervous system. This creates disorder in our nervous system. And this affects our physiology because stress hormones are then pumped into our system. Cortisol, stress, 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 all right? Our, our brain says, our heart says to our brain, and we don't like this. It sends cortisol to our, to our body. It says digestion, slow down, heart rate, speed up stress chemicals, go, right? And then we feel bad. Um, when these symptoms are in, sorry, when these signals are in this disharmony, we call this state incoherence, okay? So when we're incoherent, our brain signals, our heart signals are out of sync. They're not in harmony. And of course, this means that we're stressed. We're in a stress response. We're angry, we're upset. We're frustrated, we're overwhelmed, we're incoherent. So coherence, incoherence, right? Your emotional state is reflected in your heart rhythm, your heart rhythm patterns, okay? This is called your heart rhythm variable or HRV. Now keep in mind, this is not your heart rate. So it doesn't have anything to do with how fast your heart is going. It ha has to do with the rate of your heartbeat from one beat to the next, to the next, to the next. You'll find that when you're in an incoherent state, your heartbeat varies greatly from shorter to longer to shorter to longer. You're going to see jumps in your heartbeat from faster to slower. Okay. But when you're in a coherent state and you're experiencing these positive loving emotions like appreciation, love, and care, your heart rate variability is smoother, it's synchronized, it's coherent, right? So there's actually technology that can show us in real time what kind of state we're in through our heart rate variability. It can show us if we are incoherent or if we are coherent. 
And I think that's really, really cool. Okay. And another thing that's really awesome about the heart is the heart has an intricate network of neurons, just like the brain does, which creates its own unique intelligence. This is often called the heart brain. Okay. So your heart isn't just a heart to pump blood. It also has neurons. So it has intelligence just like your brain does. I think that's really cool. And this very unique heart intelligence is the source of non-local practical intuition. Intuition. Now, I know who I'm speaking to right now, <laughs> people at a metaphysical church. And so I know intuition is a big part of who you are and what you do. And if you ever wondered about how and why you're intuitive, the answer is it's from your heart. The heart is the source of your intuition. The heart is your source of just knowing. When I don't, I can't see something. I can't, I don't know mentally, but I know, you know, I know in my heart that's intuition, right? And that's why there's always those, uh, the statements of listen to your heart, right? People always say to listen to your heart because there's wisdom in your heart. There's intuition and knowing in your heart that your mind can never know, right? So now that we know the science of heart coherence, let's talk about the impl implications of heart coherence in your life, okay? So Huge stress is a dysregulated nervous system, okay? A dysregulated nervous system, huge stress. And we're going to talk about hypervigilant nervous system versus hypovigilant state, okay? But we all have a normal, a healthy nervous system, all has a normal state of being, okay? So what happens is our nervous system has a sympathetic nervous system and a parasympathetic nervous system. So for instance, something happens, somebody says something nasty to you, your kid talks back, says something awful to you, right? Now you're activated and that sympathetic nervous system hypes you up. Now I'm angry, now I'm agitated, now I'm upset. But over time, over time, your parasympathetic nervous system kicks in and it settles you back down until something else happens. And now your sympathetic nervous kicks you into fight or flight, into angry, into bitterness, and then it slows you down, right? But if we are in stress enough, if we are in stress all the time, if we're stressed when we see the news, if we're stressed when we go on social media, if we're stressed when we go to work, if we're stressed when we go home, what we have is what we have is a dysregulated nervous system. And now when I experience a traumatic state, Instead of just getting a little upset and then recovering like, like we normally do, now I jump up. Now I get into these hypervigilant states. And then I stay there for long periods of time. I can't just get over it. I can't stop this. These are the states. These are these upper states, the angry, frustrated, annoyed, right? Sleeplessness, hostility, rage, restlessness, resentment. When I, I might be able to, I might stay in this hypervigilant state of my nervous system because I just can't regulate. I can't get it back down to neutral. Okay. Some of us will do that. Like I, for me, I know a lot of people will like get into this state during work all day. All right. And then when they get home, they get down here. This is called hypovigilant. Okay. Your hypovigilant state is the lows. Now I get home and I'm done with everything and now I crash. And now I'm just fatigued. I'm exhausted emotionally. I'm disconnected from my family. I, I really don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to engage. I don't feel good. I'm in pain, right? I'm just, I'm maybe upset. Maybe I'm sad. Maybe I'm feeling a little depressed. I'm feeling down. Okay. So this dysregulated nervous system is what creates havoc. It creates our emotional state. And it's constantly keeping us stuck in this loop of just not being okay on the inside. Okay. Oops, I can stop share here, huh? All right. Are you guys back to just me now? <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the good news. 
the good news is that you can train your nervous system to be more regulated. You can train your nervous system to be more resilient, right? And that's a, that's a big word there, guys, resilient. Just like you can train your cardiovascular system to run a marathon, just like you can train your muscles for a, like a bodybuilding competition, you can train your nervous system through heart coherence, okay? You can create a more regulated nervous system that is more ease, more at contentment, and that you don't stay stuck in these hypervigilant, hypovigilant states of being and these trauma stress responses, okay? And that's amazing. And you can do that with these three things. There's three things that are simple, but so important. So you can do that with your will. You have to use your will, right? And as a human, we have will. We have free will. We can decide to do what we want when we want, right? So we're going to use our will. Two, we're going to use our awareness. Awareness is so important because whatever, you're always aware of something. But wherever your awareness is, that's where your power is. And that's where your energy goes, right? And three is your imagination. Your imagination. Your imagination, guys, is so important. It's not just something that we do to like think of fairies and unicorns, right? It's super important. Imagination is an aspect of your divinity. Okay, guys, think about it. What time in our lives are we the most imaginative? What time in our lives do we use our imaginations the most? When we're kids, right? When our kids, when we haven't been human that long, right? Because kids are so close to still being spirits. Before we incarnated, we were spirit. And in spirit, we manifest with our imagination, right? It doesn't take time. We think something and it's there. We think something and the message is given and received. We imagine and we create. We still do that here. We create with our imagination. It's just a different process. All right. So imagination is super important. It's an aspect of your divinity. So your will, your awareness, and your imagination. Okay. With these three things, you can do one of the most important things you can do as a human being. You can learn to regulate your own nervous system. You learn to regulate your emotional state instead of the outside world. Think about this, guys. You are now in control of you and how you feel, not the outside world. This is your power. You become the source of joy, ease, and contentment in your life, not the outside world. You become the master of self. This is your power. This is your true freedom. The more you build and create this state of coherence in your body, the easier it gets. The more you bring yourself back into balance, into coherence, you change your baseline, you change your default mode, right? You change the default mode of your nervous system and you find yourself more resilient when challenges come. What used to trigger you doesn't bother you anymore. And when you do get triggered, you recover much faster. Resilience. Stress may have knocked you off the horse for hours or even a whole day in the past, but now you consciously recognize when you're triggered and you shift yourself into coherence and you cover and you recover in much less time. So, there is a very practical and easy and a very effective technique to achieve this state of heart coherence. Would you like to learn it? Thumbs up from the chapel if you guys would like to learn it. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Okay, good. So this is done in three easy steps, okay? Three easy steps. I'm gonna make it easy for you because I want you to, to remember, okay? One is to shift in awareness. All right, shift. Step one is the shift. This is so important, okay? 
So what you're going to do is you're going to shift in awareness. Now think about it. If I asked you where you feel like you are in your body, you're probably going to say, I feel like I'm up here, right? Because you have a body and you're in your senses. So I feel like I can see from up here. I hear from here. I smell from here. I taste from here, right? And up here is where it feels like I'm thinking. I'm in my mind most of the time. I'm up here in my head. So instead of being in your head, I want you to shift to your heart or your chest area. And you can do that even when you're looking at me right now. What I want you to do is just put your awareness in your chest, right? Now you can still see me. You can still hear me but you're also aware of your chest area. Put your awareness in your chest area. Breathe in a little slower and deeper. Oops, sorry. This is called heart-based consciousness. When you put your awareness in your heart, you're no longer in your mind, your mind-based consciousness, you're in heart-based consciousness, okay? So what you're doing in this is you're taking your energy and you're taking your stresses, you're taking your frustrations, you're taking your bitterness, you're taking your anger, you're taking the things that are going in your life, your relationships that are tough, your stressful job, you're taking the input of the outside world, right? And then what you're doing is you're using your heart as a filter, right? So when I pour this in, what comes out, right? It's clean. My heart is a filter. And when I bring my awareness to my heart, right, I'm, I'm reducing my stress. I am regulating my emotions and look what comes out, right? So I wanted you to know that heart-based consciousness is important. Step two is imagine your breath is flowing in and out of your heart or chest area, breathing a little slower and deeper than usual, okay? So I want you to do that right now. Breathing in through the heart. Imagining there is a hole right in the center of your chest and that maybe you're breathing through a straw. I mean, if you're breathing in one, two, three, four, five, that you're breathing out one, two, three, four, five. Now, very, these two steps is called shift and reset. Shift and reset. Now, continuing to have your attention on your heart, continuing to breathe. What you're doing is what I just showed you. Your, your heart is now sending the signal to synchronize with your brain which is si signaling your sympathetic nervous system, right? It's creating more ease, compassion, contentment, okay? Now, the last step is to make a sincere attempt at to experience a regenerative feeling such as appreciation or care for someone or something in your life, okay? So, as you breathe into your heart, slowly and deeply, I want you to think of somebody or something in your life that you love, that you care about, that lights you up. And I want you to feel that feeling. I want you to breathe it in with your inhale, and I want you to breathe it out with your exhale. And with every exhale, you radiate it into that field around your body. Letting that love, that care, that appreciation just flow through your body, through your cells, through your field. Every breath in, it gets stronger. Every breath out, you radiate it further into the room. You radiate it to people around you. You radiate it throughout the building.
Okay. For time purposes, I'm going to make this short and I'm going to move on to the end. So I want you to know that what you did is you created a state of heart coherence. This is a practical tool that you can do anytime. In the middle of the day, shift to your heart, heart-based consciousness. Breathe into your heart, slower, in and out, okay? This is called shift and reset, okay? When you're meditating, create this state, radiate it through your body, right? And you know the effects it's having on your whole system, okay? What I like to do every single day and what I encourage you to do, one of the last things I'm going to encourage you to do is live each day re reminding yourself to shift into your heart space and to create that coherent state. So what I like to do is I take a little pen and I just draw a little heart. I just draw a little heart on the inside of my wrist. So this time, every time I see it, it just reminds me, okay, go into my chest. Bring my awareness into my chest and breathe. And I do that when I'm driving, when I go outside and I'm frustrated, okay? So bring your attention back to your chest. Live through that chest, create that coherence, all right? So what I, I'm very grateful that you guys were here to, to um, hear my message today. I hope that you can use these states of coherence to find that freedom within yourself freedom to regulate your own emotions, freedom to be the source of joy, and ease and contentment in your life, right? Freedom to not be controlled by the outside world, that you are okay because you are the so source of joy in your life. You can use this tool at any time to be happy, to be peaceful, to feel that gratitude for your life, to live from the heart, okay? Well, thank you. Thank you for your time, everybody. Many blessings. Mm -hmm.